Joe, do you think you're going to be able to get this one in tonight? You know, I, I think we're going to do everything in our power, and I think baseball will do everything in our power. So I would suggest you make some plans because I think we're going to be here a while. <laughs> what do you think this evening's going to be like for Derek? Well, I think it's going to be extremely special. Um, something that, you know, obviously he'll be able to carry with him the rest of his life. And I think it's something that all of us will remember. Um, that we were here tonight, um, similar to, to Moe's um, last night, that we were at the stadium the night he played his last game. He's always been a guy through the years that has kept his emotions in check. Do you think that could be difficult for him tonight? I think it'll be extremely difficult um, just because of what this has meant to him over the years. I think it's going to be difficult. Who else? Joe, what about your emotions? I mean, you... You've known Derek yeah. from the beginning. What's it going to be like for you? And is, it, is it a night of mixed emotions because knowing it's his last game here? It'll be difficult for me. Um, you know, I got a little choked up yesterday um, after his last at bat and the way the fans reacted. I mean, you start thinking that you've been around someone for so long and all of a sudden he's not going to be there and the importance of him to this organization. It was, it was you know, I got a little choked up. Tara, to your right, Joe. Joe, I'm. I'm sure you've been asked these stories a million times, so if you don't mind indulging again, can you recall your first meeting with Derek, when it was any of the circumstance, and if you remember any early impressions? Well, really the first time I met him was in spring training of 96. Uh, and my impressions of him, it was a young kid that was, was talented but was extremely relaxed in his surroundings and had a smile on his face and was energetic. Uh, and nothing seemed to phase him. Uh, you know, the situation, uh, opening day, 1996, uh, big games, and I, and I was just like, it's not that easy to relax. It really isn't. Um, but he had the ability to do it, and I think that's been a huge part of his success over in his career and why he's come up with so many big hits and big plays, because he can do that. Yep. Use the mic. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a little different. It's not necessarily a follow-up. But um, just to think for a moment about being with one team for your entire career, how many guys like that did you know? Do you think we'll really see that very often in the future, the rarity of that? And what do you think that means to Derek? Well, I think it means a lot. I don't think you're going to see it um, very often, uh, a, a player play with a team that long. Um, trying to think who, who's, you know, in the last 20 years, who's chipper, yeah. I mean, it just doesn't happen very often. And we may not see it for a while again. Zach, do you have a question? Joe, I trust you're not going to share this with us, but in your mind, have you thought about how you're going to you know, celebrate him at the end of the game the way you did with Mariano last year? You know, I'm just going to kind of let it go. Just let it go through and take its course and um, just kind of let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, right here. Joe, I'm curious, at the, at the end of an era like this, have you given any thought to what it might have been like with Buck Showalter had he stuck around? And um, just curious what you think that would have been like and what you think we've learned about Buck uh, now as he's coming on third uh, straight winning season in Baltimore as well. No, I haven't given that any thought. Um, I guess if you were to say it, if he was still here, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line, um, <laughs> I probably would have been somewhere else. But um, obviously, um, he's done well wherever he's went. Um, and he's been a guy that's been able to build organizations up to be successful. And uh, they played extremely well over there. And uh, they played better than anyone in the East and almost better than anyone right now in the American League. And that's why they're in the spot they're in. All the way in the back left, Joe. Uh, Joe, this is, I realize, a Major League Baseball question, an organizational question, but from your managerial post, have you heard any conversations about contingency plans? If tonight's game gets rained out, what could possibly happen? Well, the only thing that I saw on a, on a ticker was if the game meant something, we would play Monday. That was the only thing I saw. Um, I have not heard from anyone um, from Major League Baseball, but I really believe they'll do everything they can to get it in. Buck, in the middle, Joe. Uh, Joe, not that I expect you to lay out a blueprint over here to your right, but is there anything you can share about your weekend plans in Boston? I, I don't have them yet. Um, I'm waiting to meet with him, so 
uh, he'll be in, I'm, I'm sure, fairly shortly. And I, and I told, you know, I talked to him, let's meet today and decide, tell me what you want to do. And then when he does, um, I'll let him share it. I probably won't. <laughs> Nate, right behind. Uh, Joe, I'm sure you've heard the stat about Derek having only played in one game in his career where the Yankees were mathematically eliminated. Um, and I know it's, it's a team game, and that has a lot to do with the team that was around him all those years. But what role did he play in, in making that a statistic that we can talk about? Well, I think he played a pretty big role. Um, that spot is, is a pretty important spot on, on a ball club every year, a shortstop and, and a guy that hits up in the order. So I think he played a pretty important role, and he was a big part of it. Who else? George? Has Kuroda indicated to you that what he wants to do next year? No, he has not. Um, so, I mean, obviously that's probably something he'll sit down after the season and make the, the decision, but uh, you know, he's not 29 either, so um, I, I, I'm not sure. Tara? I know you're going to let uh, the night unfold naturally, but have you thought about anything you might do personally, keeping a baseball from the game or what you do with the lineup card, that kind of stuff? Um, well, the, my lineup cards I keep all the time anyway. I mean, that's just what I do um, because I think it tells a story during the course of a season. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll keep one ball. Um, but but it's, it's the memories more than the mementos. That, that I really want to hold on to uh, when I think about my time with Derek Jeter uh, and just you know, the things that he did when he was a young player, the things as he did as a middle age and an older player, uh, just being around it. Um, remembering the, the 3,000th hit w was really special. Um, those type of things. Remember celebrating in the clubhouse with him. Uh, those are the things that I'm going to remember. Barry. When you're in the heat of the moment, usually you don't give yourself much of a chance to be nostalgic, but you sound like you're being a little bit nostalgic. Do you feel that way? Well, yeah, I'm sure I, I will be a little bit tonight. Um, you know, unfortunately for us, this game doesn't mean anything, and I can sit back and maybe uh, think about it a little bit as, as the game is unfolding. Um, I would rather have it the other way, but that's the case we're in. Dave, to your left, Joe. Joe, could you understand the position that the Orioles might be in if this drags out and drags out and it's wet and all of that, with, especially what they have? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not what you want for your club, but you know, all clubs have have to adapt through things, and it's and it's part of it. And um, would I be shocked if it was extremely wet? He took a few people out. No, um, but this game is very important to the Yankees and Major League Baseball. and But I understand. Um, you know, we've been on that side, too. Uh, it's unfortunate the weather is the, what it is, but that's not something we can control. Joe, again on Derek, uh, looking back, when, when they write, whoever they are, write the definitive history of baseball. That would be you, guys. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> If they do a thumbnail of Derek Jeter 20, 30 years from now, what should they say about this man? Um, you know, I, I, the one thing that, that – a couple of things that have always stuck in my mind about Derek is he's a winner. He believes that he can overcome any obstacle that is in his way. He has – an extreme amount of mental and physical toughness, um, and he loves what he does. Uh, those are the things that really come to mind when, when I think of Derek. And you know, like I said, I had a chance to watch it for a long time, and and you know how it manifested itself over years. Ninety-six, he was a little bit, you know, younger and maybe a little more youthful enthusiasm in a sense, but. There was always the smile and the happiness to play the game. And that's, that's how you want your players. You want them to really enjoy what they're doing. Take one more in the back. 
Joe, you mentioned the lineup card. I don't know if you wrote it out yet, but it, I if, haven't because he's not here yet. <laughs> when you do though, and you realize that you're putting his name on that line for the last time, what do you think you're going to be feeling? My feeling, you know, I feel really fortunate actually. Um, to have a chance to do what I've been able to do with the players that I've had, whether it's a Derek or a Mo last year, um, being able to, to go through that experience, um, watching Andy and Georgie and uh, just being around for a lot of these guys. And um, it's, been, it's been really enjoyable. Um, I even think back on Mike Messina's 20-game win season where – he was a great pitcher for a long time, but never won 120 until his last year. I felt fortunate to be around that, um, and it's enjoyable for me.